Uh, good morning. Um, I should like to talk to you about the, uh, the potential for electronic leak detection and particularly location of leaks. Uh, we've listened to the, the speakers this morning talking about the problems of water ingress in buildings, podium decks, basements and so forth. Um, I'm Simon Dobson. I'm a chartered engineer, mechanical engineer. Uh, my background's in the automotive industry, but uh, I've been with Buckley's, who are a leading UK producer Oh, I can't actually read that. <laughs> I can't read it. Excuse me, I'm putting my glasses on. Um, Buckley's is a leading UK producer of electronic leak detection equipment. We also make uh, a series of corrosion mitigation and uh, measurement devices. And uh, we've been doing that. We're based in Folkestone. We're just coming up to our 100th uh, anniversary, our centenary, which we're very much looking forward to. Um, <clears throat> podium decks, uh, you've obviously seen. Uh, it looks like John and I were reading the same document. Uh, we want to avoid water accumulation, we want to make sure that drainage works, and we want to make sure that water doesn't ingress to the building below or adjacent buildings. Um, podium decks typically have traffic on them. Flat roofs are very similar, but without traffic. And, of course, green roofs and blue roofs may have vegetation or other uh, mitigation features on top. The, uh, the, the key issue for me is finding the leaks before you put the stuff on top, and I'll come back to that. Um, where did water leak uh, electronic detection come from? It came originally from the petroleum industry. Um, as electronics became more portable, transistorized effectively, it, it got applied to the water detection, uh, water leak detection. And there are a range of standards across the world which are applied mainly to flat roofs, but as we've seen, can also be applied to the decking. A little science, perhaps. When there's a floor in a waterproof layer, water gets through, electricity can get through too. If there's a ground path, and if the voltage is sufficiently high, there'll be a current we can detect. When we can detect the current, we can work out where it is. The electronic part, therefore, is two, part, two, two systems, one to generate a voltage and the second to measure it, detect its location. And there's good old George Ohm. I'm sure most of you have heard of Ohm's law. If we can detect the difference in conductivity between the membrane, uh, intact membrane and the leak, we can detect where the leak is and therefore you can fix it. There are effectively two groups of systems in use today. Uh, wet and dry systems. The wet systems, voltage field mapping, I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. That's something that we, Buckley's, provide. Uh, water lances, wet rollers, wet sponges, and install systems. Ben's already talked a little about install systems and how they are becoming a key feature in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the decking industry. Dry systems are capacitive, thermal imaging, and uh, high voltage DC uh, pinhole detectors, which is again uh, an area we talk about, uh, I will talk about because we produce them. So the wet methods will uh, effectively use the conductivity of the water. That means that you can actually use a low voltage because it's much more conductive than air. Um, the detection of the leak will be the current between the ground electrode and the field electrode. And the localization can either be by sweeping a an electrode over the area or by using voltage field mapping or an installed system here here is a little uh, diagram of something that Ben talked about earlier if you have a, a a series of electrodes which can be scanned individually and you have a membrane and then you place another series of electrodes over the membrane you can scan them X and Y and as you scan them if you get a water droplet going through between them you form a conductive bridge between two of the electrodes and it will in fact tell you where it is. Obviously the resolution of that depends on how close together your conductors are um, and of course how close together your conductors are might drive the price of your system. So that's something we, you need to consider. The simple systems, a wet sponge, this is a, an instrument we used to produce in, in, in quite significant numbers, but it, it's typically not an architectural or a, or a construction instrument. It, it's aimed more at car body shops and, and uh, 
paint paint shops, that kind of thing, because it's small. It it, it is used usable in um, for detecting leaks in upstands uh, and and alley, uh, locations where you can't easily use a, a, a water pool. But uh, it, it's not really something that we would recommend for for construction. A slightly larger version, uh, the chap there has a basically something like a brush, but it's actually a, a sponge roller. It's con continuously supplied with water. It's also connected to the electrical detector, and he can then roll that around, and he starts at the low end of the fall and works his way up the fall, and if he finds a hole, the, uh, the conductivity of the water will, will show on the instrument that there is a connection between his sponge roller and the ground below the... Uh, below the, the non-conductive the waterproof membrane um, that that is certainly a possibility for the kinds of projects that we're talking about here um, it is however probably quite inconvenient um, and it, it requires quite a bit of setup and, and clear space as well and I think that's that's an area we come back to over and again uh, I think we'll we'll touch on but the wet lance method probably more suitable for geomembrane, possibly if you're doing a site before you build in it, or geomembranes for, for tips and possibly gas protection. Uh, the wetlands effectively uses a pressurised jet of water, and again, you work from the bottom up. If, you find a, if, the, if the water jet touches a hole in the membrane, there will be conductivity, the instrument will indicate. Um, voltage field mapping is an area that Buckley specialise in. We've been producing these instruments for oh, well over 20 years. They are ideal for roofs and podium decks, substantially flat areas with little or no obstruction. Um, shallow slopes, the fall is clearly not a problem. If there's a floor through which the water can penetrate, obviously electricity can too. And uh, the detector uh, uses... In, uh, basically a pair of ski poles um, so we place a trace wire around the area you wish to test or a portion of that area typically maybe 20 meters by 20 meters or a little bigger uh, it's connected to a, a portable generator battery powered the generator is connected to ground uh, we actually connect the plus side to ground that sounds slightly counterintuitive uh, but that allows the voltage field to be created now you can't see a voltage field, but the detector can. It looks, you could imagine it looks a bit like a mountain or, or a range of mountains, and the peak of the mountain is over the hole in the membrane. Or if there are multiple holes in the membrane, there will be a row of peaks, whatever it may be. And then with your ski poles, here's our little Buckley's man, you can probe. And if you imagine, I'm sure most of you have been skiing, if you imagine standing on a ski slope with your eyes closed and you move your poles around, you would be able to say, oh, yeah, I can feel that that is the uphill part of the mountain, even with your eyes closed. And effectively, that's what our detector does. You wear a small portable device on your neck and the poles, and it will tell you which pole is higher. And by moving your poles around and then walking around on the membrane, you can find your way to the floor. So it's a very simple and effective way of locating even very small floors. Um, Typically, things like screws, nuts, bolts stamped into the waterproof membrane by other trades, as, as Ben and John have both mentioned. That, that's the, the wet field detection. It has some advantages. Uh, as long as you've got a, a substantially clear area, it's very easy. If you've got, and, and again, probably not something that's a podium deck problem, but a roofing problem, which is an area we're more, more familiar with, uh, if you've got solar panels, if you've got uh, air conditioning equipment, they, they will have earthed penetrations and they will distur disturb the electrical field, which makes it more difficult, but, but it can still be dealt with. But if you've got a substantially level smooth and uh, not grounded, and, and if it's raining, it's, it's definitely the easiest. Uh, what's going on? Ah. Um, I, I think uh, James mentioned something, and Ben certainly did, about water transition under a membrane, uh, the lateral movement of water. The wet method is very, very effective at finding that. I'm going to talk a little in a moment about dry methods, and they are not good at finding this, but the wet method is beyond doubt the best way of finding the source of long, uh, complex leak paths. 
The voltage field method will detect them, uh, and it's a very, very good method if you've already had, uh, if, the, if the, the, the membrane has been in situ for a long time, there's been time for water to soak through the leak path. It, it actually makes it easier to find the leak. Dry methods. We supply the arc testing material, uh, method um, equipment. I'll describe that in a moment. The other dry methods available. Um, thermal imaging. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen thermal cameras. You see them on the news and various things when they're looking for bodies in earthquakes and such like. They're also extremely effective at finding uh, water under a waterproof layer because the water has a high thermal capacity, high heat capacity. Um, if you have a cold night, the water cools down, everything else cools down, sunny morning, the membrane that's not wet will dry up and will warm up quickly, the water will remain cold. The thermal image will show you that. It's a very effective way of locating where water is under a, under a membrane. It's not a great way of finding how the water got there. Um, Similarly, capacitive methods, there are a number of uh, companies providing capacitive devices. They look a little bit like a lawnmower, um, four wheels on the corners and a handle. You push them along, and they will detect the capacitive difference between dry substrate under a membrane and wet substrate under a membrane. And again, they're very good at delineating the area that you might have to work on to, to remediate the leaks, but they're not terribly good at locating where the leaks are. The, the arc testing method, we use basically spark plug voltages. If any of you had a shock off a spark plug, you know it doesn't, it doesn't do you any permanent damage, but it certainly makes you sit up and take, uh, take notice. Um, so we use a similar sort of voltages. They're around the 20 to 30,000 volts, which sounds enormously high, but it's very common. Um, what you do is a scanning approach. Effectively, you push a brush across the area you want to ser uh, search. The brush is conductive. Um, the instrument's carried in a shoulder bag and you take a ground wire back to the building ground. The test voltage is important. Um, I, I said it's a, around the, the voltage of a spark plug. Um, we will give you good guidance and, and indeed the better instruments, including ours, will provide you with a guidance based on the thickness of the layer that you're actually trying to test. You don't want to put on too high a voltage and burn your way through it. Clearly, that would be very counterproductive. Similarly, you want to make sure that you've got a sufficient voltage that you will detect a fault if there's one there. Um, so the instrument will flash, uh, give you an alarm, and uh, you can then use the brush to detect the exact location of the fault. Here's my colleague Chris, one of our sales guys, uh, modeling the, the, the famous Buckley's hat and the, uh, the instrument in the shoulder bag. Uh, you can see the features there. So the brush may be 600 mil wide, something like that. It's on the end of a, a stick, and you can rock it over. Once you find, if you find an alarm, you simply pull back, go in with the corner of the brush, and you can find you can find the spot very, very clearly. <coughs> Trying to keep a large, flat, windswept area on a sunny day, keeping it wet for a wet method is going to be very difficult. So the dry method has a huge advantage anywhere when it's a day like today. Um, it's going to be much easier using that. Um, the dry instruments are smaller, lighter, more easily carried onto a roof, uh, possibly less of an issue with podium deck. Um, and, of course, the other thing is you can apply a dry electrode to any surface, including, obviously, overhangs and, um, and upstands. I think the sequence, uh, and I, I bow to the, the experts in the field because clearly I, I'm, not a, I'm not in the construction trade and I'm not in the uh, podium deck business, but um, the, the key point is really from our perspective is to ensure that the, the waterproof layer is properly applied and when it is, to do the testing. Don't try and apply the other layers and then test because... Frankly, I don't think you'll get good results. Talk very quickly about the, the, uh, the systems that are available today. Uh, the, the permanently installed systems, uh, ben, ben talked about that, but I mean, clearly the advantage is it's, it's on all the time. It's permanently installed, it's there. Assuming it's, uh, it's live, it will give you information immediately. And the big thing it can do... Sorry, laser it can actually detect leaks under an overburden. It can also localise a leak under an overburden. 
effectively none of the other systems are going to do that very well. The wet system will allow you to say, yes, if I have a planter, be it a metre square or three metres by five, there's a leak under that planter. Yes, we could do that. I won't tell you where it is under the planter, but I can tell you it's there. The, uh, the other systems, as I say, we, we are interested in the voltage field mapping. We can certainly detect and locate complex leaks uh, on a variety of membrane types and liquid applied uh, waterproofing, and we can with the high voltage arc testing. I think that's really the key message. Please test it before it before you cover it, and please ensure that you use one of our instruments to do so. Thank you.